Alistair from Cosine just announced what they refer to as the world's most capable AI software engineer, achieving 30.08% on SWE Bench. And they claim this model is ahead of Amazon and Cognition, which are two very strong models that are performing well on SWE Bench. For those of you that don't know, this is the SWE Bench. So we see here the public leaderboard, although their model is not here because they claim due to wanting to keep everything proprietary that they weren't able to uh, publicize their results. Uh, the top model here is Amazon Q Developer Agent. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go through all the details of this announcement. How did they create such a capable AI software engineering tool? What does that mean? And the future of this particular space. But before we do that, please consider leaving a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That helps the channel a lot and allows me to keep doing these videos for you. So here is the announcement from Alistair. He's a co-founder and CEO of Cosign. And you can join the waitlist. I already did that. So hopefully we get access to this and we can take it for a spin later in a future video. So here's the takeaways. The takeaways is that their model performs state of the art 30.08% on the SWE benchmark. And this one, this benchmark contains real world GitHub issues that need to be fixed. So this could span lots of code files and so on. So it makes it task really hard. This is why these models are not getting like 70, 80%. But I think progress on this benchmark will be important to understand how the progress of models on code generation is progressing. And they also achieve 50% on SWE Lite, so it's a light version of the original benchmark. And Gini was trained on proprietary data that codifies human reasoning, representing perfect information lineage, incremental knowledge discovery, and step-by-step -step decision making derived from real examples of software engineers doing their jobs. What they're trying to do here is they're trying to sort of emulate that whole human reasoning process. This is why they had to create this proprietary data so they're not sharing this publicly and the idea is that we want to train this model to be able to do all of these tasks that are necessary to solve in this case this github issues or any problem in a particular project and so the way to mimic that is by allowing the model to reason break down problems and have a good strategy to solve that problem, right? And be able to iterate on issues and be able to solve those as well. And here they mentioned something about incremental knowledge discovery. To achieve that, I think it needs good retrieval mechanisms. So be able to do that in an efficient way, right? Not pull the same thing that it ha has already seen and some kind of memory component as well. I'm not sure how they're doing that. They didn't share that much in this blog post, but if they are going to release more details or technical details, I'll be interested to see how they actually achieve that. But anyways, that's kind of the higher level picture here and they go into some details about what the actual announcement was so they're introducing Gini I won't go through all this text here but they're mentioning here that this is a 57% improvement over the previous best course held by Amazon's Q and Code Factory at 19% and for context OpenAI's GPT-4 scores 1.31% you can see the benchmark here that's available here if you want I'll leave a link in the description to everything that I'm covering here if you're interested in going through some of of the details. So I'm going to go to the evaluation here. They evaluated on SWE Bench and Human Eval. So you can see how it performed on the SWE Bench. Here is the more detailed version of that. And we already went through that. Something that they really mentioned that caught my attention here is this retrieval component. As I mentioned, having retrieval capabilities is really important for these code generation models and software engineering assistance. It will be important because you know that with code bases, there's a lot of codes, very complex structure. Projects can have that. And so how the model retrieves information is a little bit different from your standard freeform language tasks where we just are maybe pulling information from a PDF or something like that. And even that is to be quite complex, but I think this is an interesting aspect that they mentioned here. We measured this particular capability simply by seeing how many lines that the model needed to find to complete the task were actually found. And Gini scored 64% by successfully retrieving 91,000 of 142,000 required lines. So they noticed that there is much more room for improvement here. And this is one of the aspects that was focused on less than the ability to break down problems. So there are a combination of capabilities here that are important with these models for solving these software engineering problems in an automatic way. One of those is the retrieval component that was mentioned because of those efficiency parts and how important that is to retrieve relevant information. And also because it needs to be able to break down 
own this problem, reason about the problem, and do that in an efficient way. So those are the two parts that I mentioned. The architecture, I noticed that they didn't mention a lot. The only thing that they mentioned was the importance of long-range context or long-form context. And so they trained a long-context OpenAI model. They don't mention a specific model, but you can already make some assumptions about what model that is. So they fine-tuned that model, apparently, on their proprietary data set that they mentioned. And this is what allowed them to get to the model that they're announcing today. And this is just a data mix. Interesting JavaScript and Python and TypeScript. Uh, that's the distribution. And they mentioned that they want to make this distribution as true as possible to how programming languages are mentioned and used on the internet. So that's what they mentioned here, as opposed to just doing purely on opinions. This is just the example type type of data that they use are like feature development, bug fixing, refactoring, minor changes and chores, test writing, writing and updating documentation. So that's the data mix and that's the distribution as well for that. So they also mentioned something about Agentic and how they have been calling that out for some time and how that's really important, but really what they're trying to do here is to go from first principles, like actually think deeply about the type of data sets that are needed to get to these really highly performance systems on these software engineering tasks and how to automate all of these tasks. And they mentioned something really interesting here, which is this is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the work that was done to make as much implied information in a developer's mind explicit. So the model is going to be able to achieve this. And that's their goal. They mentioned here that the agentic loop is comprised of four main processes. They showed in that example of planning, retrieval, code writing, and code running. So the model has ability to do that, right? To write the code, uh, test the code, run the code, uh, get that feedback. If it's not working, then test again until it gets it right. It can create files, it can edit files, and so on. That's what I'm assuming by code writing. And one interesting bit that they mentioned as well is the use of self-improvement in training these models. So there has been lots of developments around self-improvement and self-play and so on. But I think self-improvement makes a lot of sense for code generation. There is a lot of data out there that they can use. And the problem with these models is that they are good at generating perfect answers, especially for code, because there's so much examples out there. The problem is, how do they know when they are wrong? How does a model reason about when it's wrong and what it will do to correct itself? So this is the idea of self-improvement. How do you inject that capability. It won't happen or emerge on its own. You actually have to explicitly train that model on this particular data set or wrong type of examples as well. And you need to do that in an iterative way, meaning the way this model improves in the self-improvement way is that it sees the wrong outputs, it corrects those wrong outputs, and then in the next iteration, it sees that problem again, it doesn't get it wrong. If it gets it wrong, it tries to improve again, and then it goes in that iterative process until it gets it correct. And the model now has learned how to fix mistakes. And if it makes a couple of mistakes, how to fix that, right? Instead of like derailing itself and just not solving the task at all. So I think that's an interesting concept that we will see more and more of, as opposed to this model can solve the stats in one shot and just accomplish it. That's not really how problems or complex problems are solved. Even for us humans, we do tend to do mistakes, like maybe mistakes on numbers and calculations. And for code, it's not that different. And so I think that would be an interesting capability that they will continue to improve. They mentioned something about the future, that they want to go beyond code. You can take a look at the initial video that we reviewed, but I think they're trying to build even more capable systems. They're moving away from just using these wrapper models or just a workflows and actually instilling in these models these capabilities making that whole set of capabilities native as opposed to you know something that's external so i think this is we need companies like this that are pushing the boundaries and can share more on how they're using all these research ideas so i'm very excited about this and excited to get access to this model to test it out and we'll definitely do another video on that i will leave the video at that thank you for watching please consider again following the channel and liking the video that really helps and supports the channel I'll see you in the next one.